Let's make a quilt with my mommy. 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 Hello, everybody. And welcome once again to Let's Make a Quilt Together. This time, we are going to make a quilt that will feature the Dresden Plate Quilt Block. And I'd like to get started with showing you, number one, the quilt that I made using the Dresden Plate Quilt Block. I love it because it has a lot of drama and hopefully yours will too. We can do this quilt using templates that you can either buy or make yourself. Here are some that you can purchase. Notice I haven't used them. There was something I thought I needed early in my quilting career and I went out and I bought them. Really great for making the Dresden plate. And then this one, and some of you may have purchased this one as well. That's fine. And some of the directions that I'm going to give you are directions that you're going to find right here with, that came with your template. But I want you to learn how to make your own template because that's when the real fun begins. As you look at the quilt behind me, I made the templates for all of the Dresden plates that you see here, which gave me a lot of design opportunities. I could make them different sizes, such as this large one and this large one. I was able to make them small. I could make some mid-range ones. I was able to make some dress in place that had different length spokes. And all because I made my own templates. So I'm going to take a little time to show you how to make your own template and to help you really unleash your creativity. So we start. First I want to show you how you can make your own templates. We start with a piece of graph paper and preferably it should be graph paper that has one fourth of an inch squares because that gives you more latitude for different lengths. And once you get your graph paper, you want to adhere it to something firm. In this case, I just tore up some old folders and I glued each sheet of graph paper to an old folder. And that's where we start. Then I want you to take your ruler measure, draw a line using your ruler, and in this case we'll start with six inches. Later on when I finish all of the directions, you will realize that you can start with whatever length appeals to you. But basically, draw a line that is six inches long. At the top of that line, on either side of it, draw a length that is one and a half inch long to the right, and one and a half inch long to the left. At the bottom of that line, draw a length that is one half of an inch to the right and one half of an inch to the left. Now you're going to connect the top line that you drew to the bottom line at, at the bottom on each side. And you have what is a type of triangular shape. It's not a true triangle but you have a triangular shape. That is the template that we're going to use for our Dresden plate spokes. And use your paper wisely, and you can get several different sizes on one sheet of paper before you cut them out. And that's the next step. The next step is to sit down with some scissors and cut out each of your templates and now you're ready to start. Right now I'm going to show you what to do with the templates that give you the points. And we will talk about the other templates that will give you a rounded top in just a minute. Here are some of the templates that I made 
in order to complete the quilt that you see behind me. And notice in each case, it's just graph paper adhered to a piece of folder. In this case, I had some colored folders. But we can go from this size to this size to this little guy all the way to this. So when you make your own templates, once again, you have so many more design opportunities. Okay, let's say you have your template. Now you're ready to trace it onto your fabric so that you can cut out the spokes. And this is what we do. Notice that I've begun to trace some of the templates onto this, and I want to show you how that's done so that you can use your fabric wisely and get the job done. Notice that I take the template, I put it right on the line of the previously traced one, I make sure that I have the top of the template at the edge of the fabric here, the bottom of the template at the edge of the fabric here, and I do need to back up a minute. You will cut a strip of fabric, the width of your fabric, that will be the as wide as your template is tall. And since this template is six inches tall, I had to cut a strip of fabric that was six inches wide. And this is how we trace these onto the template, onto the fabric, using the template. Make sure you are taking your time and trace as accurately as possible. And just, be, just to make sure your strip of fabric is the width that your template is tall. The template is six inches, the width of the fabric strip that you cut is six inches. And we will continue flipping this template until we have drawn or traced all of the, the spokes that we need for the Dresden plate we're going to make. And ultimately, your strip of fabric would look like this. We've got all of these spokes traced onto our fabric. And so now we need to cut them out. And cutting them is very, very simple. Take your ruler, lay the ruler on the line. Remember, two templates share one line. And so once we get the edge of the ruler on that line, we're ready to cut the template out. That's one, and we follow the same procedure all the way down. You want to take your time, get the ruler on the line that you drew that is shared by two of the spokes for your template, for your Dresden plate, and you'll cut until you get the number of spokes that you need. Now that brings up another thing that I need to tell you. When you are creating your own templates, sometimes it's hard to tell the number of spokes you will need. So cut out at least five, maybe six. Once you have addressed what you need to do with them and you lay them down, you can then determine how many more you need. And I'll demonstrate that in a little bit. So you know how to now draw your template. Cut your template out, lay the template on the fabric that you've cut, and it's a strip of fabric that is the width that the template is tall, and you know how to trace and cut out the fabric. So the next thing we need to do is treat these templates and get the sewing done. And I'm going to just demonstrate that standing here so here is one that has been cut. And what I want to do with this next is fold it in half and give it a good pinch on the fold. And I want to come down almost halfway, giving it a good pinch on the fold because that fold is going to be so important to you in a few minutes. Then I would go to the sewing machine and stitch it across the top 
just as this has been stitched. You can see that we stitch using one fourth of an inch seam allowance and make sure you fasten your stitches here by back spacing a couple of, couple of stitches and fasten your stitches there. You don't want the seam to break loose. Then let's say that you've done all of these and you can assembly line sew these. See, we can sew several at one time. Just run them through the sewing machine like this. And when you're finished, you're ready to just clip them apart. Using your scissors, just clip those threads and you've got all of your spokes sewn together across the top. Now, the next thing we need to do before we turn this, and we have some pressing to do, I want you to cut a little triangle of fabric off of the fold at the top above the seam. That tiny little wedge, I know it seems insignificant, but it's very important to making this seam lay flat when you press it. And so once again, you're going to clip right at the fold, clip one tiny little wedge out of that fold and you're getting rid of that little bit of seam allowance and it makes a big difference for what you're about to do. Now, remember when I told you to pinch and make a fold down the middle? That's because we want to lay this flat. We've turned it inside out like so. And here's my fold, and that lets me know that that's the middle. And now I want to press, and I would take all of these to the ironing board. We press our seam allowances open. This can be kind of tedious, but it pays off in the end, and it makes sure that you have spokes that will lay flat on your background fabric. And the little pinch that you made in the middle at first shows you where the middle is and you can make sure that that seam meets the middle on that part of the spoke or the blade. And in each instance we want to get to the middle. We want those, here's one that you can see very easily where the middle is. We want that seam right there on the middle. And you will take these to your ironing board, press the seam open, try not to press out here on the fold because you don't want that. But we want to press this seam open using the tip of your iron or if you have a small iron that you take to class with you sometimes, use a small iron to get that seam nice and flat. Then when you have done that, you're going to turn this to the right side. And when you turn it to the right side, you will press it again. And this time you can press these folds flat. Once again, you're going to turn it to the right side and you really want that point to come out. And you have folded it and you have that crease in there to help you. Lay this down and now give this a good press so that you will end up with a spoke, blade, whatever you want to call it, that looks like this. Notice how these are pressed. The seam is open, and these are laying so that the seam meets the middle of each spoke. And you have to do that with each of those that you make. And if you'll look behind me once again at the quilt, that's what was done for each of the blades that you see here. That's how we get that point, is by folding the blade or folding the spoke, stitching across the top, opening it up so that we can press that seam allowance flat, and then turning it to the right side, and you get that nice point that you want for your blades. Now, before we go any further with that, 
There are some of you out there thinking you don't want to do all of your Dresden plates with points. You want to do some of your Dresden plates with the rounded template. And so let's back up just a little bit and talk about the rounded template. We create it the same way that we did the other. Graph paper, put it on a blank folder, and then we draw a line down the middle, the length that you want it to be. We drew one and a half on either side of that length at the top, one half on either side of that line at the bottom, and then we connected just like we did. The only thing that is different here is we have to get an arc at the top. And there is a variety of ways that you can get those arcs because it depends upon what you really want. If you put the point of your compass, and we're using just a regular school compass, the kind of compass that you used when you were in elementary school, nothing fancy, just a school compass. And when we put the point of the compass here, and we put the pencil end here, we can determine how high we want the arc because we will draw from keeping the point where you put it originally, connecting this point to this one. If we start by putting the point of the compass one half way up this line, that's the low, lowest arc we will get. If we move it to the three-fourths of an inch, uh, three-fourths of the line point, the pink shows us what we would get. If we move it all the way up here to the top, then this line up here is what we will get. You can decide, I love this because it's another design option. You can decide how tall you want the arc to be on your rounded spoke. And you're not, you're not hemmed in on just having it one size. When you use templates, Everything has to be the one size that you get in the template package. When you do it yourself, you can add some variety. That's why it's important to know how to do your own templates. Okay, what are you going to do with these templates once you've cut them out? And that is your next step. You've <clears throat> you want to cut your template out, just like you did when you had the other uh, template. I found that it was easier to cut these out with scissors because of the rounded part right here. If you're skilled enough with your rotary cutter and you have a blade that you don't mind using on paper, then of course feel free to do yours with the rotary cutter. And now let's see what you're going to get. Here is the template. Here are the uh, drawings. This is so light, I should have used the darker fabric. Notice once again, template down. And this strip of fabric is a little bit wider than the template is tall because you need to give yourself some wiggle room here at the top. But I do put one end of the template at one edge of the fabric, trace the template. Then pick the template up, turn it around, put that edge of the fab that edge of the template on the other edge of the fabric. The two pieces are sharing the same side. And then I trace the template. Once I have finished tracing, I'm going to do the same thing again and again and again until I get all of the spokes drawn that I will need for my Dresden plate um, quilt, quilt block. Now, when you cut that out, I found that I could Cut the long side out with the rotary cutter and the ruler. 
And so I did. And when I cut it out, this is what I got. In order to go any further, I had to sit down with my scissors and cut the rounded part out. And that's what you're going to do. Take your time with your scissors, cut that arc out very carefully. You want to be as accurate as possible and just have a good movie or a good TV show going. And you can sit in front of that to get all of these cut out or get the number cut out that you need for your Dresden plate. Okay, we've got all of the Dresden plate blades cut out. Now what do we do? Okay, you have traced your template onto the fabric. You've cut the spokes out with your rotary cutter following the straight line. You have also now sat down and cut them out at the top but we have to do something to make sure we don't have a raw edge at the top. When you did this spoke, the raw edge was already taken care of by sewing that seam across the top. That doesn't happen for this type of spoke. So what you're going to do is take your template, lay it down from this line up to the top, on a small strip of fusible interfacing. If you look right here, you can see that this top line of the template is at the edge of the fusible. And I just took a pencil and traced just the top. I've traced one, two, three, and I'll do one more so you can see exactly what I mean. You have to be very careful. Make sure that line at the top here that you drew, the one and a half inch and the one and a half inch on both sides of the center line, make sure that's at the edge of the fusible web, fusible interfacing. And then just take your pencil and trace the arc at the top. And just take your time. This doesn't like to be traced very well. And you have one more. Then you're going to take your scissors and cut those out. And just cut very carefully because this is going to help you finish the top edge of the spoke so that you don't have an edge that's raveling and coming apart. And so that the top of your rounded top spokes will look just like these. And what we're going to do is put right sides together, right sides of this fusible with the right side of the spoke, sew them together, and I can show you with this one, I've already done it. But we sew them together, right sides together, right sides together, you see the fusible, you see the spoke, then you're going to use a one-fourth of an inch seam allowance, just like you did before. And now we're going to clip that circle. You want your circle to lay nice and flat. And one of the ways we ensure that is to clip around. And once you have done all of the clipping, you will trim that seam allowance so down to one four eighth of an inch in size because you don't want one fourth of an inch seam allowance in the top of this. You've clipped it, then you trim it, and now we're ready to turn everything to the right side. And when you do, you get this and that finishes the top of your spoke. And you can see those right here on this particular uh, temp, uh, Dresden plate that I have on the table. Now I'll tell you a little something about the Dresden plate. If you look at my quilt behind me, you don't see any plates that have that rounded edge. And one of the things I noticed about the Dresden plate is when you have the rounded edge, it's very soft. It gives you a quiet feeling, a very feminine feeling, and it just is, it's pretty, but it's just there. 
when you use the points as I have done here it's far more dramatic and you want to keep that in mind if you're like me and you want drama in your quilt make sure you have at least one Dresden that has the points if you don't want drama in your quilt and you want it to be soft and gentle and quiet then you want to not use those that have the point you will want to use the one that you see here on the table with the rounded tops and it makes a big difference so keep that in mind as you're planning your quilt your Dresden plate quilt now while we're looking at this one on the table you're not confined in putting all of one color all of one fabric all of anything into one plate you're going to use your you're going to put your plates together the way that pleases you every plate could be different here every I mean every blade could be different every other blade could be different they could be similar sizes or different sizes the choice is up to you as to how you design each of your plates but what you want to do is design it in such a way that it pleases you no one else it just has to please you and when you have finished sewing all of your blades or spokes together you have just about finished your plate there'll be one more thing we need to add and I want to talk a little bit about putting the plate down notice once again I don't use the same fabric in the whole dress and plate um, I do have some on my quilt some of the smaller ones have used all of one fabric but I tend to mix the fabrics mix up the fabrics a little bit okay let's say you have made all of the blades you need for your Dresden and you have sewn those blades together and now you're ready to press one of the things you need to know is that we press all seam allowances open because it gets rid of the bulk that would be there if we press those seam allowances to the side make sure you press all seam allowances open and I found the easiest way to do that was to sew the spokes together in pairs then I pressed the one seam allowance between the two in each pair then I sewed two pairs together and I pressed one seam allowance between the two pairs then I started then I pressed four of them together and each time you only are pressing one seam allowance because the other seam allowances have already been pressed. That helps you to prevent pushing this over with the iron. It's just a much easier way to take care of pressing all of your seam allowances open. I mean, yes, you don't want to wait until you have finished and then try to press all of these open. It becomes cumbersome at the ironing board. Now one other thing I want to show you and I turned this over deliberately to show it to you. When you're making your own template sometimes you don't know quite how many blades you're going to need or spokes. Sometimes you get them together and you just need to adjust the seam allowance. Notice on this one the seam allowance was adjusted here. That's larger than a one-fourth of an inch seam allowance and it was adjusted here. What happened was this would not lie flat, and yours may not, and that's fine. That's not the end of the world. You can make some adjustments. Sometimes it will require you to put one more blade in. Sometimes it will require you to take a blade out if you've put too many in and it's not flat. And sometimes all you need to do is adjust the seam allowance. Just make the seam allowance a little bit bigger. And I can trim these, and you would never be the wiser. But I left them here because I wanted you to see how I adjusted this one to make it lie flat. And you may have to do that with one of yours because it has to be flat to be applied onto the background fabric more easily. 
You don't want it to have a lump in it. So keep in mind that you can adjust the seam allowance to make sure it's flat. You can take a blade out to make sure it's flat. Or you can put another blade in to make sure it's flat. Either of those will work and you're going to be the one to make that decision. Now let's talk about applicating this onto the background fabric. It doesn't matter what background you use except you want it to have a strong contrast. You want the Dresden to stand out from the background fabric. No matter how busy or beautiful the background fabric is, you want the Dresden plate to be the focal point. So keep that in mind. It wouldn't work very much if I put this Dresden on a piece of gold or yellow fabric. It wouldn't work as well. But by having it on a fabric that is beautiful, that has all these purples and blues and greens in it, it makes the Dresden stand out. And if you'll look at the quilt behind me once again, you'll see what I mean. When you look at this quilt, even though the background fabric is very busy, but when you look at this quilt, the Dresden plates pop right out. You see them immediately. You don't have to wonder where they are or look for them. They just come right out at you. Now, background fabric. That's going to be whatever you want it to be. You could sew each one of your Dresden plates to a different background fabric and then sew those pieces together. That's fine. You could do what I did, have one solid background and then draw, then uh, attach your Dresden plates to them. Now, in order to do this, I had a lot of black and white fat quarters. And I qu cut those fat quarters into strips and cut some black fabric into squares to help the eye to move around the quilt. And then I sewed the whole background together first, even the borders. I even put the three borders on before I put the um, Dresden plates on because I knew when I was working on this that I wanted the Dresden plates to be scattered all over the background. I wanted some to look like they were in the binding and I wanted some that would come out on top of the binding. So I had to sew my whole quilt together, so to speak, before I put my Dresden plates on it. You don't have to do that if that's not your choice. So when you're looking at what you're going to do, and remember the requirements for this class as per your handout, is that you do at least three Dresdens. You can do more than that, but I do want you to try at least three Dresdens. And if you have this kit, there are three different sizes in this kit. If that's what you want to use, by all means do. I would like you to challenge yourself a little bit to create at least one template and see if you can make a dress and plate from your own template. That's very, very gratifying and I'd like for you to have that experience. But you must decide what you want to do with your background and how you're going to um, put and what you're going to put your dress and plates on. And so when we get ready to do that, you can hold this on temporarily in a variety of ways. We can use pins. And there's another way that you can do that you may not have thought of. A simple school um, glue stick will work. And this one is kind of old. But if you put just a little bit of glue up here at the top and press it down, that will help you to make sure everything is flat before you take it to the ironing board. And if you use glue, don't iron on that until it has dried. And then once it has dried, you're fine. And if it's purple, it's okay. Purple school glue uh, gets clear and you don't see any purple on your fabric afterwards. Then how are you going to attach it? You've got it down, it's flat. Well, you can attach it in a variety of ways. One is to stitch in the ditch. 
You see the stitching in the ditch right here. And But I didn't do it for each one. I did it maybe every three or four just to hold it on there. Because once this is quilted, the quilting will hold some of it down. And if you have some little petals that don't all lay down, that gives your quilt a three-dimensional effect. But if you want, you could stitch all the way around each of the tops to fasten everything down. You're going to do what you think will work for you when it comes to applying this to your background fabric. And if, once again, we'll look at the quilt behind me. In some instances, I sewed on both sides of the seam. And I also sewed along the top on this one. This one, I only sewed it stitched in the ditch. I didn't sew any of the points down. And so some of the points stick up. They weren't caught in the quilting, and so they will come up. And that's fine with me. Um, here's another one where I did not stitch the points down. They're caught in the quilting. And you can see that one opens up just a little bit. Here is one that I stitched every point down again. Here's one where I didn't. And so that's a choice you're going to make. How much stitching do you want to do to adhere your Dresden to the um, background fabric? But you think about that and you decide what is going to be necessary for you. This is one that I did not stitch all the way down. And so you have to decide that yourself. It's interesting if you try something like this. The ones that were long, I had to stitch them more than I did the shorter ones because I had to make sure I didn't have a raw edge here. And it would have been a raw edge if I had not stitched that down. So all of these long ones are stitched out here. They're not stitched in the body there, but I did have to stitch them down out here before I had this quilted. So there's another design decision that you are going to make as to how much stitching you want to do. Now, we're at this point. You know how to make templates. You know how to use those templates to trace them onto your fabric. You know how to cut your fabric out. You know how to sew the templates. On this one, you sew interfacing on the back. On the other one, it takes care of itself when you sew that point. And now you're going to, then you're going to sew each of your blades together using a 1 4th of an inch seam allowance. And sew 2, 2, 2, and then 4, 4, 4, like that, so that you can press all of your seams open. And I do caution you, I didn't say it at first, but when you have the rounded one, just make sure when you're stitching them together, you start right at one fourth of an inch, and I'm, I have my finger behind it, but right at one fourth of an inch on for these two to come together. And it just works out so beautifully that if you stay with a one fourth of an inch seam allowance, that little stitching that you use to put the interfacing on comes right at the very top of the stitching and you're, you're less likely to see it. So you keep stitching. Remember, if it doesn't lie flat, you have three ways that you can correct it. You can either put one more blade in, you can take a blade out, or you can adjust the seam allowance or seam allowances. Your goal is to make sure your Dresden plate lies flat on the background fabric. You can stitch it down. You can use a little bit of glue. You can decide if you want all of the points to be sewn down. You can decide if you want the quilting to catch the top of it. Those are all design decisions you're going to make. And in our next lesson, we're going to look at how do we get the circles on and how do we embellish our Dresden plates. Hope you have some happy sewing as you make your plates, and I'll see you back here for Let's Make a Quilt the next time. Bye-bye.